So we looked at the cranial bones just a minute ago. Now we're going to look at the facial bones. Cranial bones are all the bones that have anything to do with the cranial cavity. The facial bones are the ones that don't. So the first facial bone we're going to look at is going to be what we call the mandible, the only freely movable bone in the skull. The mandible is the lower part of the jaw. And so there are little holes, and again, if you remember, a hole in a bone is generally called a foramen, most often, not always, but most often. And if you remember that the chin area, in anatomical terms, is called the mental, then you'll know that this hole is called the mental foramen. Now the next is going to be the largest bone in the skull called the maxilla. The maxilla is all of this here, so it is the, the upper part of the mouth, it's going, to make a lot, it's going to have a lot to play with the uh, orbital cavities, um, the nasal cavity as well. Um, so this is the maxilla. The first, um, the first anatomical landmark we're going to look at is this little hole here. It is below the uh, orbital cavity, so it is called the infraorbital foramen. Now I'm going to go to this model to look at it from the underside. And so now we're looking at this here, all right? So this is, again, if I, if I was to pick up the skull and look at it, I'm, all I'm doing is turning it over. So this is the upper part of the mouth. There is a dividing line right here. This is a, a bone posterior to this is called the palatine bone. Now, just to hopefully you know this, if not, let me inform you that the upper part of your mouth is called the palate, and you have a hard and soft palate. That is why this is called the palatine bone. Now, where this line is anterior to it is a process that's extending off the front part of the maxilla, and it is part of the palate, so it is called the palatine process. It is like a little floor. If I kind of go go a little bit sideways, and you can't really tell maybe if I raise it up a little bit. It is a flat portion here. It is a thin portion, basically divides the, the upper part of your mouth to the lower part of your nasal cavity. And so this little floor that extends out here is called the palatine process of the maxilla. And in the most anterior portion here, you're going to see a little hole, a foramen, Right. These teeth up here are called incisors, so this hole is called an incisive foramen. Right. Now the last part of it, and I'm going to kind of show you a little bit here. Right. This is the, if you remember, uh, this is the zygomatic arch. So if I go back to this view, this is the zygomatic arch here. All right. So we looked at in the cranial bones, this part here is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So this part right here is the zygomatic process of the maxilla. And so if I was like some crazy aunt at a, at a family reunion and I was to squeeze that little cheek right there, that little part that I'm holding right here, this is a little bump that sticks out from the maxilla. If I was able to take all the other bones, you would see then just look at the maxilla on its own, you'd see this little bump here. This is the zygomatic process of the maxilla. So I've got these two zygomatic processes on either side of this zygomatic arch. And then we get the one in the middle. This is the zygomatic bone. The reason that this arch is called the zygomatic arch is the zygomatic bone makes up the majority of the bony structures of that arch. So we call it the zygomatic arch. Now, this particular part right here, the part that I can hold on to, this part of that is called the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And it's because they didn't want to call it the zygomatic process of the zygomatic bone. So they refer to it as the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. So the zygomatic arch is going to have the zygomatic process of the maxilla, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, and then the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Now, we, after we get through with that, we start seeing some smaller bones. These here are called nasal bones. If I go a little bit off to the side, you can kind of see it right here. This is where your, your um, eyeglasses sometimes sit on. And if I angle it a little bit and I can see the, this nasal bone, I can also see this little hole that's right here. Now, you're constantly producing tears. It's a, li it's a liquid that cleans your eye. So I'm looking at it right here on this side. As your tears drain, they drain down this little hole. 
Now, I'm pointing this out to you because if you know that the scientific name for tears is a lacrimal fluid, the, the gland that produces it, it's called a lacrimal gland, the duct that drains it, the lacrimal duct, then you should also be able to identify this bone as the lacrimal bone because it's got this little hole in it. That's the reason I wanted to point it out. It's like a big neon sign going, meek, 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 meek. This is the lacrimal bone. Now, the other bones I want to just mention, there's only a few left of the facial bones going back to this, and I already pointed this out. This bone right here, the posterior part of the hard palate, is called the palatine bone. And then finally, if I was to look at this straight on, like I'm Hamlet or whatever, uh, or Othello, I don't know, I'm not brushed up on my Shakespeare, and I apologize about that. But if I was to look at this, this little guy right here, this whole ridge is called the nasal septum. The majority of the nasal septum is made up of a bone called the vulmar bone. This lower part is the vulmar bone. Now, the upper part, if I go up here, we looked at in the, in the cranial bones, this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, the one that sticks down. They work together to make the nasal septum. But because the vulmar bone is the majority of the septum and the one that is the most easily seen, it is the one that can be called nasal septum. If someone refers to having their nasal, having their septum, um, they have a deviated septum and they have to have surgery to repair it, the bone that they're working on is the vulmar bone. Now, those are the bones of the, the face, the, the facial bones as they're called. If I carry this over here, now I'm in lab, so I'm going over here. There is another bone that's listed with the skull, and it is this one. It is called the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone has a couple of distinct characteristics that are good to know at parties and at trivia. The hyoid bone is the only bone that doesn't articulate with any other bone. It has no touches on any other bone. If I go back, and I think this one is connected up, um, if I put the skull as it should, <clears throat> you'll see the hyoid bone is really hidden underneath uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the mandible. And so um, it is hard to palpate. It is the one, if you watch any of those uh, CSI or uh, NSCS or whatever alphabet soup there is, if someone is, if they're trying to figure out if foul play is, uh, at work, if someone has been strangled, that that's what they look for to see if the hyoid bone has been crushed. So those are the bones of the skull. Uh, the next video is going to be about um, the sutures.